and thank you for joining me in this here video. We are going to take a look at the Mono Black Starter Deck, Out for Blood. Now, as a budget player, it's very important to me to not only play and get my quests done. As you can see, I don't have any quests done today, or quests to complete today. Um, and the, the way we do that is just by playing whatever the color of the quest is going to be. And so today mine was black, and so I took a look at the Mono Black Starter Deck. It's called Out for Blood. I made an upgraded version. We'll cover that in a minute. Uh, something I discovered with these monocolor starter decks is that they, in fact, suck pretty bad. So let's take a look. Uh, now, I'll play this deck a couple of times. I'll show you guys what I'm what I'm seeing and what I like about it, what I don't like about it. And then I'll cover some budget upgrades for it uh, and then make something that's pretty good. But the last thing you want to do is try and upgrade these starter decks into something that's either a, a, a total totally different deck or totally different concept and then uh, what ends up happening is you spend a lot of wild cards and you just kind of waste them so it comes with two bone splinters which is uh, destroy a target creature to sacrifice in addition to it's one black you have to sacrifice a creature and then you destroy a creature it's not horrible two disfigures a target creature gets minus two minus two to end of turn for one black knight of the ebon legend is one black it's a one two and for two and a black, it gets uh, plus three, plus three, and gains death touch until end of turn. At the beginning of your next end step, right? So the, the beginning of, at the end of your turn, basically. If a player lost four or more life this turn, uh, put a plus one, plus one counter on Knight of the Ebon Legion. Now this also applies to you, so if I should lose life on my own turn, then uh, he would also get the counter. Um, this is, this is a good card. But this is not the kill card in this deck, so and I'll explain later. Um, four Vampires of the Dire Moon. It's a one black, one one death touch life link. Four of those come in the deck. Two Childs of the Night. Very basic. Uh, one and a black, two one with life link. Two Dark Remedies. One and a black. Target creature gets plus one plus three. Nice little combat trick. That's one of my favorite plays. Actually, it's combat tricks. Two Sorn's Thirst. Two black and Sorn's Thirst deals two damage to a target creature only, and you gain two life. Four Vampire Opportunists, uh, one and a black. Each opponent loses two life, and you gain two life. Two of a Walking Corpse, one and a black. It's just a 2-2. Two -two, that's all it does. Two Bloodthirsty Aerialists, one and two black. Whenever you gain life, put a plus one, plus one counter. So, so every time you lifelink with a creature, you get a counter on the Bloodthirsty Aerialist. This is a terrific card. Um, this ends up being more like the kill card in here, and, and you'll see that as we play it out. Two murders come in the deck, one and two black, destroy target creature. One savage gorger, one and two black, it's a one one with flying. And at the beginning of your end step, if an opponent lost any life at all, put a plus one plus one counter. So it doesn't matter how much life they lost, if they lost life, yeah, he gets the counter. Two spinal centipedes, it's two and a black when it dies, put a one one counter on a creature you control. Two agonizing siphons, it's four, three damage to uh, any target and you gain three life. Two rises from the grave, or rise from the graves, or rise from the grave. However you want to pluralize it, that's up to you. Four and a black, you put a target creature from the graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. That creature is a black zombie, in addition to its other colors and types. Now, this is kind of cool for zombie synergy, but it has no bearing on this deck at all. There's doesn't matter if they're zombies or not. Uh, two bog stompers, so for four and two black, you get a six five. There's two of those. And one Grave Waker. It's four and two black. It's a 5-5 five, five flyer. For seven mana, you can return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. And a whopping 25 swamps. So, let's play this deck a couple of times. Now, we're not going to win. And as I say that, not Out for Bloodier. That's my version. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's just see how Out for Blood plays, okay? This will be quick. This deck is is straight up bad uh, and we're playing in ranked so we're playing against decks that are loaded with a bunch of mythics and rares and this thing's got like two rares grave waker and like in the night of the ebb and hold maybe it's not even ebb and hold whatever he is actually I have a list yeah, it is ebb and hold wow this is the worst starting hand ever <laughs> So we'll mulligan. Okay, so here's a good example. We're going to get two Vampire Opportunists. Uh, yeah, actually, I like this. And what we'll do is I'm going to take an Opportunist and put him on the bottom of the library. 
I don't mind having an agonizing siphon because it'll go good with the Savage Gorger. And in the default version, there's nothing but land in this deck, so it isn't like we'll be shy of land anytime soon. We're going to drop the Opportunist. Now, if you look at his ability, for seven, each opponent loses two life, and I gain two life. So it's going to trigger Savage Gorger. It's going to tri trigger my Aerialist. It does a lot, but it's seven mana. I'm never going to get seven mana. He's playing flash creatures. This may not end well for me at all. He might flash something down. Oh, well. So now it starts working. Okay. We can deal with that. But now, as you can see, uh, the Brazen Borrower bounced my Savage Gorger just as I was getting counters on him. Just like the moment it was happening. Okay, so check this out. He flashes down the wolf. He's going to declare him as a blocker. Oh, he's going to take it. it. Works for me. So I'll block the Spectral Sailor happily. I should have disfigured him. Because now we can activate that card draw, which is kind of nice. And I'm not going to block. I've got some life gain, so I'll go ahead and take it. That's fine with me. Ouch. In theory... In theory, I've got some life gain. So, okay, so here we go. We can disfigure the wolf. We can Soren's Thirst the Wolf. Okay, here we go. I like this. Okay, he counters it. That's okay. That's not okay. That's gonna that's gonna ruin our day. Back with my flying creature. Of course he doesn't block, why would he? So now you can see the the big loser that vampire opportunist is, right? We'll go ahead and block because I don't want to die. And before we declare, before nope, I missed it. I blew the timing. I wanted to. Oh, it's a sorcery anyway. Never mind. Ooh, does not look good. So I could drop the Opportunist and use it as a blocker. Going in for three. Live one more turn, hit him for four, and then hit him for seven, which isn't going to do too much next turn. I think that's my best play. Just save this for a blocker. I'll take seven myself. But I've got to attack to build them up to at least a 4-4. Four, four. If he flashes down a blocker, I could be host. This is a cool deck idea. Oh, so he cycles Shark Typhoon, and now he kills my dude. That's uh, This deck actually cannot beat Shark Typhoon. So if he played Shark Typhoon, we're dead. Um, we typically can't deal with Planeswalkers either. So this is going to happen. It's not even worth blocking. Like, if you win. And that's what will happen with this deck. You'll start off to be in a pretty decent place, and you'll think, hey, maybe maybe this time will be different. Maybe I'll win. You're not going to win. This deck is, is very bad. Very, very bad. Like, bad. I'll prove it one more time. I probably don't have to. You all are probably on board like, yeah, dude, it sucks. Just stop. But just, but hear me out. Let's just see. Maybe we just got a bad draw. And we know we did. We know we got. That was like the worst possible draw. It was nothing but sorceries. 
torch. So almost the same exact. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we're going to have to mulligan this. We can't have no play for three turns. That will, we're dead. We're dead. Oh, this actually isn't too bad. Okay, here we go. Yeah, this is something else I don't like. Oh, we're going to get rid of the bog stomper. No, the bog stomper. Thank you. And I'm going to keep a one land hand. I'm going to do that. Because I have a Vampire of the Dire Moon. I actually like Vampire of the Dire Moon. There we go. Normally, with this deck, in the default setting, you get a ton of land. Just because that's how it's designed. There's 25 swamps in this thing. It's ridiculous. Uh, when we do the upgrade here in a minute, we'll take out four of those for sure. There we go. We got three... Still can't even make a play. And now, and here's the thing with this. Like, we've got so many... So many other cards. We can't even play... Grave Waker. And when we do play Grave Waker... We might be able to get them out this, this game. These are cool lands. I like them. Passioned Orator. I will have to deal with him. You can bet he's not blocking. Our vampires got death touch and they don't ever block him. Go ahead and nuke this guy. We do not want him gaining life all over the place. He's going to make a bunch of tokens on us, and then we're dead for sure. See, and I'm doing it again. Like, well, maybe if I can get a few more creatures out. He's got a handful of cards up here, so... This is not going to go well. I haven't seen this one yet. It's home, Simulacrum enters the battlefield. You may search your library for a basic land card to put in play tapped. Okay. And then when he dies, you draw a card. That's actually pretty cool for artifact creatures. I like that. And I can't kill it with my Dark Remedy, so... Oh, yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah. I thinking it was a 4-4 for some reason. A little reading goes a long way. Right. Or I could murder it, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to attack. He may block the 2-2. Two -two. Okay. Well, I am definitely keeping... My Vampire of the Dire Moon alive, for sure. I'm gonna gain some life. And here I go again, thinking we got a shot. Pacifism. Okay, so this will work out well. I can sacrifice him to draw cards with my other... Um, Oh, there's really nothing going on, is there? This is crazy. We're defeated by a 1-1 one, one token. Alright. Did that for a couple of reasons. I don't mind having a creature in the graveyard for either Rise from the Grave or in... If I draw into a swamp, in all likelihood I may, I can play my Grave Waker, and that could... That could be something nice. So he creates an Ajani's Pride Mate. That's terrific. A pure soul can and Dawn of Hope. Wow. Do I murder the token? Do I wait and just kill it? Hmm. Do I rise it from the grave? Now, that's from any graveyard, so it doesn't have to just be my graveyard. Our true strength lies in our friendships. Yeah, I'm gonna murder that token. He goes away.
Whenever you gain life, put that many counters on him. Okay. Well, he's going to get awfully massive here in a second. Got our choice of murders. Here we go. Now he's for sure going to block because he wants to save a Johnny because a Johnny is pretty powerful. Yeah. Oh boy. Now I've got a 2 2 that can't do anything. We cannot have the bloodthirsty aerialist in play. So we have to use a murder. We have to. We've got no choice. And then we can play the Grave Waker and then start for seven. So for one more swamp, we can start bringing some of these creatures out with Grave Waker. Now, now Grave Waker isn't the card we're going to build around either. Lucky for me, I've got a whole bunch of creatures in the graveyard now. I like this. I'll take the damage happily. <laughs> Draw the card. There he goes. And this is where I think the game starts to get away from us. If I don't get a swamp, I can play the Vampire the Dire Moon. Take a bunch, but that's okay. I've built up some life, so I'm kind of okay with that. No, I'm not blocking. I'll go down to 19. That's all right. So here we go. Okay, we're going to play the Vampire of the Dire Moon. Destroy his big creature. Sacrifice our guy, our worthless pacified creature, and we're gonna go ahead and take out a Johnny. I fought my hardest. So he could. I'm not blocking that vampire dire moon, right? Actually, I am. Yep. That's this is a funny move because because I got a death touch creature also. There is my. Oh, we're going to going in for five, and I'm going to save the the ability here for a creature to crank out. That's fine. He murders him. Oh no. I've lost my only blocker, have I? So I'm not going to do anything. He's going to attack. That's terrific. These guys. And they don't get exiled when they die again, so I can just keep bringing them on back out. Now. If I had the wild cards for it, I'd bring out a bunch of Grave Wakers. Except they're tapped. Whoops, that's my bad. get another one of these guys oh well, this is his uh his graveyard so I'm gonna go with the bloodthirsty aerialist of course now he's gaining life and has got the card draw advantage from dawn of hope so this is where the game could could get away from us although this one's not going too bad this is probably one of the best games I've played with this particular deck Get a food token. So you sacrifice it and gain the life. Okay. 
Kind of neat. Alrighty. He doesn't first strike, does he? Is it a token? It was a token. How funny. Okay, so... Now let's all attack. That's fine. Thought about keeping my opportunist in play to spend seven mana for two damage, but it's just not worth it. Fills it with a token, that's all right. The ability. And, and this is it. So this is my strategy. To win with Gravewalker and Bloodthirsty Aerialist. He played that wrong. Compassion Order comes out first, then the Aerialist, so you get the, the counter. If he resolves these two cards. Not look good. Grab one of these guys. I'm taking five. I'm not blocking the aerialist. I'm not doing it. It's all Z. Wife's playing WoW. Cat jumped on her keyboard and hid the interface. <laughs> she doesn't <laughs> unhide it. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're gonna get overrun here any minute now. That's terrific. Okay. I mean, I could block. Bring it back with Grave Waker tapped, and we're dead. Let's just. Just for argument's sake, we'll see what happens. We'll take the time. Deal. More swamps. Why wouldn't they be more swamps? Well, it's got to be opponents. Uh... Oh, this, this ability is only my graveyard. This isn't a rise from the grave. Oh, terrific. So I'm out of flying now. So his flyers will roll right over my Grave Waker. Don't want to attack because then he blocks and he munches on him for sure, and then I'm without thinking twice, I'm dead next turn. I've got no creature management at all, aside from two murders. And well then there's a few direct damage spells that'll do like Soren's Thirst, will do two damage to a creature, stuff like that, but not gonna help us. There's not enough card draw. That dawn of hope that's killing us right there. Well, it's, and all these creatures. Here comes twelve and nine. Yeah, so we're we're toast, right? And the good old knight of the ebon hold. Okay, we're not even gonna block. We're dead. Cool. So even though we played it out and tried our hardest, we got munched on real bad by. Like a real, a real deck, so to speak. So let's take a look at this deck. Got my list here. Can't lose rank stars at this terrible rating, which is fine. So, so I've spent the past couple of days playtesting this, and I really feel like um, 
this next deck setup we're going to talk about gives us the best chance to win. So let's go in um, to the Out for Blood deck, we'll edit it, and we will put in some cards, take out some cards that we think are going to give us uh, the best chance to win. Now, in all my playtesting I've done for Out for Blood, it has returned to me a 0% win rate. I've never won. Um, with the deck I'm about to show you guys, it gives me about a 40% win rate. So we'll see if we can't squeeze out a couple of wins with it. I'm going to go ahead and hide my picture so you can see exactly what I'm looking for. Um, and then all the edits we're about to make. We're not going to bring in Price of Betrayal. Um, Bone Splinters is the first one. Gone. Deuces. We don't need them. Uh, I don't like the sacrificing mechanic there, so it, it goes away. Uh, I do like the two disfigures, uh, and that's going to be something that you can sideboard into other black decks as well as, as main board. Uh, remember, this is budget, so we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. We're not trying to uh, drop six mythics and, you know, 12 rares per deck that we build because then we'll only have one deck, and that gets kind of boring. Uh, we're going to keep uh, the Knight of the Ebon Hold and add a few more a little bit later on. I like all of the Vampires of the Dire Moon. It gives us a terrific blocker also because he's got the death, death Touch and it will stall an attack if you get him on the first turn. Um, Child of the Night. They stay. So we're going to keep two of them uh, because the lifelink, that's going to play into this deck nicely. So we are going to hang on to the two Childs of the Night. Dark Remedy, gone. Bye-bye. I don't mind the combat tricks, but we just don't have the room in the deck for them. Uh, I like Soren's Thirst, again, because the damage and the life gain mechanics are pivotal to how I want this deck to flow. Um, Vampire Opportunist. It's gone. It's two casting, two one, doesn't play out very well. And the uh, activation is so expensive, you can never use it. It's not you can never use it, but seriously, you're never going to use it. So all four of them are gone. Walking Corpse, a two casting, two two. Both of them also gone. See ya. Hang on to the Bloodthirsty Aerialist. Hang on to Murder. Hang on to Savage Gorger. Spinal Centipede goes away. Bye-bye. Uh, Agonizing Siphon. Again, it's a little expensive for what we're trying to do, but we are going to hang on to it. Uh, Rise from the Graves. Both of those go away. Bog Stompers. Gone. Grave Wakers. Gone. Swamps. Down to 21 Swamps. We don't need more than that. This is going to be a much cheaper, um, better deck. So we are going to add... Three Knights of the Ebon Legion here. So bring him up to four. I did spend wild cards on them, so that's going to be three rares to make this deck work. So it's not too bad. As you can see, I've still got 17 rares to play with, so I can probably make um, a, a budget version of other decks that's going to end up being pretty good. So I don't mind doing that for Knight of the Ebon Legion. He's pretty scary. He's a pretty good card, actually, altogether. Uh, we're also going to add two Bloodthirsty Aerialists. We are going to add... With one more murder, so we'll have three murders for this deck. Um, we don't want to get too many, uh, just because if you end up getting more than one in your hand and they're running a creatureless deck, they're kind of worthless. Uh, we want to do four Savage Gorgers, full play set of those, guys. and then we're going to add Village Rights. All four of these, this is the only card draw we're going to get. And there's some pretty decent synergy with Village Rights. It's only one black. And so a lot of the times I'll use it as, um, like if I need to block or if they if they remove a creature, I'll save it and then I'll sack the creature in response to my opponent removing the creature so that I can draw two cards. Um, but I don't proactively use Village Rights. And it's, it's kind of important of how you play these cards out. Um, kind of something that we want to do on purpose rather than... Um, you know, we don't use it for active card draw. It's more like defensive card draw. Uh, we also are also going to add Serrated Scorpions. SC. So when they die, it deals two damage to each opponent and you gain two life. You can see some synergy here with Village Rites and Serrated Scorpion. If we get the chance to sacrifice one of them to Village Rites to draw cards, it will also activate our Bloodthirsty Aerialist. Um, and if it's our turn, it will also activate the Savage Gorger. So, got some synergy. And then lastly, we want to add Call of the Death Dweller. The Death, yep. So this is how we get cards back out of our graveyard. Now, it's interesting because you can get more than one, up to three, uh, casting cost. 
So if you go for an Aerialist, you get one. But if you want to get a Serrated Scorpion, a Dire Moon, and a Knight of the Even Legion, uh, you can. You get all three. So um, that's the deck. We'll go ahead and see how this one performs. Alrighty, here we go. Out for Blood, Standard Ranked. Let us see how it is that we do. The reason I'm playing Ranked is to give myself a realistic presentation of what the deck is actually going to do against real players with real decks who are who are also trying to win just like me um, losing is is not fun pretty good starting hand i don't mind getting a scorpion and then an aerialist and a gorger all at the same time there is some logic here to how i play this out so the third turn i think i'll drop a gorger and hang on to my scorpion i'm not going first though Could have the potential for some direct damage here. Shocks are in play. Goblins are in play. Now he might not want to kill the scorpion because of the damage it's going to do to him. And that works out for us. Really well. I'll see. They're gonna block. Let's see what he does. Is he gonna use this opportunity to take a take a shock and kill the scorpion so he doesn't lose his fervent champion? Combat tricks. That's not great, but whatever. I think we're gonna do the aerialist first, just because it's got more uh, more toughness to worry about. I don't love facing mono red aggro. Or what appears to be mono red aggro. With this deck, this ends up playing a, a lot more like an aggro deck does. You have some removal, so the removal might come in handy. What he's got. Gets plus one plus O. Oh. Haste, other knights. Happily take three. Got lots of life gain. And he lights up the stage. So here we go. Let's see what we can do. And this is what I was talking about. So if he if he does have some removal handy. Um, I can, I'll use village rights to sacrifice the creature that he does remove. So that way, it's going to go away anyway. I may as well use it to... Block. I'm okay with not blocking. That uh, vampire of the Dire Moon is going to end up being kind of scary because of the death touch. So I don't care how big his steam kin gets, he's not going to want to attack. Or he might. And we got first strike. Ah, the fervent champions have first strike, so he's trying to pull a fast one. Be three ones apiece. Uh, I'll take the four. Bit of a risk, I realize that, but I'm okay taking a risk. All right, so we've got some Soren's Thirst happening. Use that to take out a creature. Pump up the Aerialist. Back with all three. Drop a swamp, and now, so now I've got a question because I may want to nu nuke my own Vampire the Dire Moon to draw the two cards. I know I talked about not doing that proactively. Um, he's running a, a deck probably with a limited number of lands. Uh, this is a strategy of mono red because you want to get these guys out right here. We go. So the Steamkin. Don't think he can pop me for all fourteen this turn. 
Like, it might get close. Probably 10 or 12. Not too much more than that, or else I'm toast. Being that I have two flying creatures, I am going to nuke my own vampire to draw the cards. And we can murder somebody. Good. Okay. So there we go. We got a win. Okay, here we go. Okay. One more. Let's see if we can't get one win here. Another. Another win. Not like this hand. So Call of the Death Dweller in the opening hand. Bad. It's actually really bad. Um, the deck needs to be faster than this, so we'll go ahead and mulligan that away. Ooh. We're gonna take a risk. We're gonna we're gonna toss Disfigure away. We go first, so our knight comes down first. Like the dire moon. On. So this is turn one, two, three. Or I could do Savage Gorger if my attacks are getting through without an issue. Knight of the Ebon Legion is actually quite terrific. So four of them. And if you get more than one in play, they all get that counter. It's, it's terrific. This is almost like straight up counters all the decks. Oh, there's the cat. Cat's like, hey, what's going on, everybody? Is he really that afraid of my knight of the Eben Hold or Eben Legion? He's like, nope, not dealing with this knight today, uh uh. But now I've got a decision to make. This puts me in an interesting place. If there's no removal, and there might not be. Okay. That's having a field day back there. Um, do I pump the knight for the four or five damage? Or do I drop... I, yeah, so I'm going to play the Swamp, and then I'm going to attack. This doesn't first strike, does it? It does not. Okay, so here we go. So let's attack. See how he handles the blocking. He may block with Knight of the Ebon Legion. Or he might block the Knight. Thinking that's that I'm not going to pump it up. I am. If he does that, I'm going to pump it up. And that will delay me by a turn. Or he blocks the death touch, and then he loses. He loses the glow spore. But okay, so check this out. So I'm not gonna pump my knight up because more creatures with counters is better. So we're gonna drop the gorger, which will trigger the counter because he lost the life. That's how I'm gonna play it. I don't know if that's right or wrong or good or bad. It's just what I want to do. Okay, now I'm left with it. This guy bigger. If he's got another Plague Crafter, though, and he might, this could spell doom for my Knight of the Aben Legion. Took it. Death Sprout there. And he gets a land. He must have some expensive cards. So we're close to... Close to glory here. We're going to grab our knight. And put them right back into play. We're going to give the knight death touch and menace. He gets both. Yep. So he's going to... 
Uh. Not even gonna try and surprise him. There's no point. Uh, he's got menace, so he can't block. Yeah, so he's gonna. The death touch is gonna kill the district guide. Which he may want to keep him alive just because it's an, an extra blocker. He can't block because of menace. Yep, only option. And I wanted him to take the damage so I could pump the uh, the knight up by one. We could deal three. Eventually, I could murder a creature just to get him out of the way. Let's see what happens here. On um, okay, so he's kind of stuck. Bam. Potentially the last turn. Remember, we got Menace, so he can't block even with the Glow Spore Shaman. If he drops another creature, I could murder it. Let's see what happens. Let's just attack. Cool. There we go. <laughs> Works pretty good, right? Uh, and again, it's about a 40% win rate, so it's not super magically amazing. But if you've got quests that require like black creatures to be cast or black spells to be cast, this will be a funner way for you to build up gold while you're saving up for gems and, and the funner events. So thanks for checking me out, you guys. Appreciate it. Do remember to, of course, if you're still watching at this point, you probably are a subscriber, but um, please hit that subscribe button. You'll be doing me a favor. Thanks and have a good one.